The Doom modding scene is one of the most robust and innovative, and currently there are plenty of mods based on a heavily modified version of its engine, called GZ Doom. Some of these could be described as proper games, since they have long since forked off to run standalone. A few good examples of these are Adventures of Square, Chex Quest 3, Shrine, and Total Chaos. But this video is more concerned with Doom mods that are based on other video games. If you're unfamiliar with modding in general, this will probably be an eye-opening list. So let's get started. As the name suggests, this mod is heavily inspired by the original Lara Croft games. The level design is not as straightforward as you might expect for a Doom mod. But since it takes its cues from Tomb Raider, that should be expected. The traps are a bit annoying at first, and a lot of enemies are completely invisible. You can track them by their shadows, however. There's a good variety of enemy monsters, some derived from Doom and some more unique. Overall, it's a good mod, but probably not as ambitious as the others in this list. The Legend of Doom is based on the very first Zelda game for the NES. It's not a one-to-one -one recreation, probably to avoid copyright issues with Nintendo, but it's a very close approximation. I had some fun with this, although it's almost impossible to dodge enemy attacks. To make progress less of a hassle, I found it best to just circumvent them. Believe it or not, this is not Mortal Kombat 2. It's a Doom mod that closely resembles the original game. It's actually awesome, but setting up the controls can be quite bothersome and time-consuming. It's the reason I can't place it higher on my list. Otherwise, there's a lot of fun to be had here. You just need a lot of patience to configure the controls. Unreal RPG is a technical marvel. It looks exactly like the first Unreal game, and I don't know how the mod creator did it. I mean, this is a Doom mod after all. Graphics aside, there are some balancing issues with the gameplay. I kept running out of ammo, and the enemies were far too numerous, and it wasn't like I could avoid their attacks in narrow passageways. If the mod creator can perhaps tweak the game to be more fair, I might like it a lot more. Brutal Minecraft Eternal is inspired by Minecraft, using much of its art style and world design, but that's where the similarity ends. Gameplay revolves mostly around surviving hordes of zombies, and they don't stop coming. Things can get somewhat desperate when ammo starts running low. Don't get me wrong, it is a lot of fun to play. Mega Man 8-Bit Deathmatch is squarely aimed at multiplayer gamers. It can be played against bots, but its core audience is online. For that, you will need to run it through Xandrinum, which is a source engine designed specifically for multiplayer Doom mods. As for the game, I think it's awesome, and there are no complaints here. It's a unique take on Mega Man and all of its characters. What's not to like? Batman Reborn is based on the classic 2D side-scroller for the NES, and it translates really well to the Doom engine. It has the same pick-up and play mechanics as the original, yet offers just as much challenge. If you like the NES version, you'll probably dig this mod as well. This is essentially the modding community's take on Quake Champions, and it's pretty decent. It has a great multiplayer component, just like Mega Man, but I actually enjoyed its single-player mode even more. The level design is top-notch in my opinion. In the late 80s, Splatterhouse got its start on arcades where it gained popularity as a side-scrolling beat-em-up. This mod aims to rekindle the novelty of that horror-filled experience in 3D. It's a decent recreation of the original game, and while I had fun playing it, the arcade game was more special. Still, if you're looking for something new, this might scratch that itch. Hocus Pocus was released all the way back in 1994 for MS-DOS computers. 
it was one of the most popular platformers on the system and this Doom mod gives that feeling of nostalgia. It perfectly captures the gameplay of the original, albeit in three dimensions. I absolutely love the vibrant colours and audio design and you should definitely give this one a try. I'm not exactly sure on which Sonic game this mod is based on, but it doesn't really matter. It seems to have inherited most of its art style from the early 2D games on Genesis. The level design is as good as it gets, although physics are a tad floaty. For that reason, it will take some time before you can land easily on enemies or platforms. The Jazz Jackrabbit franchise was another awesome MS-DOS series that faded into relative obscurity. However, someone brought it back to life with this underrated mod. It's just so easy to play, and yet good reflexes and coordination are necessary to master the levels which have great verticality to them. All in all, it comes highly recommended. In Zombies Ate My Neighbours, you have two important goals. Firstly, you have to try and stay alive. And secondly, you have to save enough of your neighbours to advance to the next level. It sounds simple, but that's easier said than done. Enemies have a nasty tendency to spawn right behind you. The mod works just like the original game on NES and Genesis. Of all the mods showcased here, Aliens Eradication boasts the creepiest atmosphere. The tension builds slowly at first until the monsters start coming out of the woodwork, proverbially speaking off course. The mod is loosely based on Alien Trilogy and Alien Resurrection, which came out on PS1. It feels almost like a sequel to those games, which says a lot about its quality. Wolfenstein 3D is considered by many to be the grandfather of first-person shooters, and this mod basically dials the action to 11. It speeds up enemy attacks, makes them more acrobatic and makes it harder to stay alive. You'll be gritting your teeth and smiling at the same time. It's fun, but in a rather masochistic way. The Golden Souls and its sequel are heavily influenced by Mario 64. You'll see similar themes and hear familiar jingles in the background as you traverse the colourful worlds. At its core, it's still a proper Doom mod, but with all the playful nuance of a Nintendo exclusive. Even the way you have to acquire Golden Souls to unlock doors is reminiscent of Mario 64. Blade of Agony is one of the best-looking Doom mods ever. It's reminiscent of Return to Castle Wolfenstein, but it is more or less its own thing. It has deeper gameplay than most mods and even has a tutorial section. Still, all this graphical fidelity comes at a price. To run the mod with all its bells and whistles enabled will require a beefy computer. While not an official game, many people have heralded Simon's Destiny as the best Castlevania in over a decade. That's how good it is. And also, you have to wonder why Konami haven't taken inspiration from this mod. If the Resident Evil series can go first person, surely it would work for Castlevania as well. But that's it for this video. If you found this useful, please remember to give a like. It really helps with the algorithm. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.